Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. Today I'm going to be taking you from start to finish on how I created a beautiful coffee station in our new home. We recently moved up from Florida to Georgia and we bought our house in October and now that the holidays are over, I am so ready to start making this house a home. So if you are interested in seeing me create a gorgeous coffee bar station that is totally doable, make sure to keep watching. I'm going to be taking this dresser and creating an entire station based around it. So let's jump right into today's video. This dresser was a Facebook marketplace find. I got it for $10 and it had layers upon layers upon layers of paint on it. Typically when you find a dresser like this, if you're using a good paint and primer in one, you can get away with doing minimal work for prep work, but that was not the case with this thing. And I also wanted to take that scallop bottom off. So we had quite a bit of work to do before I could even think about painting. We got that off. My husband actually cut it with a saw and then I was able to take it back inside and start painting it. I used a paint by the farmhouse company and I was actually just planning to use a regular paint from like Home Depot or Lowe's, but I walked into an antique shop and I saw this and I was like, okay, well we might as well just try it. And it was amazing. Like I am so excited to use this on more pieces. It was so thick. I probably could have got away with just doing one coat and that is huge for taking something that was so light to so dark. I had never heard of this paint before so I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to it in the description box below. That way you can check it out and if you want you can try and find a retailer near you that sells it. I think they may also sell it online. We are going to go ahead now and move on to building our floating shelves. In today's video I really wanted it to be a one-stop shop for a complete coffee bar makeover. I won't be going into too much detail on each step just because I wanted this to be a quicker video and I wanted you to get some inspiration from it. And this is the cleat that slips into the floating shelf. And this is a great beginner woodworking project. You have a few simple cuts. You can even have Home Depot or Lowe's cut them for you. And then you build a cleat which gets attached to the wall and then the floating shelf gets attached to the cleat. And it is very simple. Don't be afraid to try this out. We've done it a few times now and it's just kind of like putting a puzzle piece together. So you're going to take the exact length you want it and that is going to be the total length with those one by four ends. So the one by fours are about three and a quarter inch and then you have the one by 10 which we cut to 34 and a half because we needed to leave room on both sides. And I am not a math whiz. I don't like math. It is so hard for me to figure out the measurement. So it's nice having my little handyman there with me. And he thinks he is just so funny. There is never a dull moment in our building projects, but then we went ahead and just nailed on the front part of the shelf. So this is what you're going to see and it looks so good. It is such an easy project. And then after we got the front piece all nailed on, I let it dry for a little bit and then I went ahead and put on a coat of this bare stain and poly in one in the color Mission Oak. And it is a water-based stain and it was a complete game changer. I have never used a water-based stain before and I did buy wood conditioner and I totally didn't realize that the wood conditioner was oil-based and the stain was water-based and those just don't mix literally. So I went ahead and skipped the wood conditioner. Typically if you're going with a soft wood though like this, this is pine, you want to condition it especially if you're going for like a seamless look and you don't want any blotches. I'm going more on the rustic modern farmhouse vibe though so I didn't mind like a rougher looking wood so definitely keep that in mind if you want the stain to go on more evenly like you can kind of see where there are darker areas and the wood conditioner would have definitely prevented that from happening but since it is the look I'm going for I really don't mind but now we're going to go ahead and screw the shelves onto the cleats and this part is super simple too I did do a little bit of a boo-boo and you'll see that I scuffed the wall up. I guess the drill was just a little too close to the wall, but it's totally fine. I'm just going to put some decor there and you'll never see it. So let's go ahead and get these shelves hung up so that we can start putting everything together. I'm driving, you're smiling.
it's our way, Route 66, and we keep on driving. We just do what we wanna do. Yeah, no, nothing's complicated. Now that the main structure of the coffee bar is done, we are going to move into decorating it. I got this vase at Walmart. These three glass jars are from Hobby Lobby along with those stems right there. This little sugar container is from Target along with this larger glass jar. And then I got a few things from the spring line at Hobby Lobby. These wood spoons are also the spring line at Hobby Lobby and I love them. You'll see that I end up actually putting them in a little vase to use on the top shelf. This tray is from Target Dollar Spot and I got this sign at Hobby Lobby months and months ago. I'm pretty sure this is when I thought we were still building our house. So I'm excited to put all of this stuff to good use. There are going to be a few things like this picture that I did not just show in the overview, but you'll see that I do pull things from just around my house too. Like the stack of books I'm about to show you, those were actually on my mantle. So now I'm going to have to go ahead and try and find something to put there instead because I stole them from there. These books were actually a goodwill find, so don't forget to check thrift stores because you can find awesome books. Books can get really expensive, especially when you just want to use them for decor. But now we're going to go ahead and put these glass jars up on the shelf and look how well that sign just covered up that little boo-boo I made. The glass mugs that I'm going to put up here are my overflow mugs or the mugs we use when we have like grilled cheese and tomato soup. I'm going to go ahead and put them up here because we don't use them every day. If I'm being quite honest, I get my mug out of the dishwasher each morning. I took this cute little vase from Hobby Lobby and stuck some of those wooden spoons in there and putting them on top of the books just really helped elevate it and bring your eye upward. Next up, we are going to decant and organize the drawer. My husband and I have never drank as much coffee as we do now living up in a colder climate. We used to have our one cup in the morning and then maybe in the afternoon I'd make like an iced coffee or if we were out shopping we would grab a Starbucks or a Dunkin'. But now we are reaching for our coffee mugs all day long and we are constantly taking turns putting them in the microwave. I don't know, it's the craziest thing. You'll have to let me know. If you live in a colder climate, do you find that you drink way more coffee in the winter? And if you do, do you end up scaling it back in the summer? I'm not sure how it all works. So it'll be interesting to see if as spring approaches, if we start laying off our coffee intake because we're definitely drinking a lot these days. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some mini chocolate chips in this jar. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the other two jars yet. I thought maybe coffee beans and then I was also thinking cookies in one but your girl loves cookies so I would definitely be eating them. In the drawer I'm going to keep my husband's sugar right here and then I'm just going to stick some tea packets behind that. We typically like to drink tea before bed. It's not like an every night thing though, so I thought it would be nice to just have them here whenever we want them. And then next up, I purchased a napkin holder on Amazon for our cone filters. And it actually worked really well because the knob has a very long screw that sticks out into the drawer and the napkin holder has the perfect cutout to just work right along with the screw. Next up is a tray I stole from my pantry. I did a lot of that today. I'm gonna go ahead and put all of our syrups there, along with the few toppings that we love, like cocoa powder, mini chocolate chips, and a mint chocolate chip. We love putting whipped cream on top of our coffee and then sprinkling a few mini chocolate chips on top, or I even love just mixing in some unsweetened cocoa powder. 
I got this divided organizer clearance at TJ Maxx for $7. I originally bought it to go in our bathroom, but it didn't fit in the drawer I was going to be using it in, so it ended up working perfectly out here. And in it, I'm gonna go ahead and store our Nespresso capsules. This coffee maker has like the full crop, but it also has an espresso maker. So it works perfectly for days where we like go through our entire pot of coffee, but we still need a little bit extra. It's easy to just pop one of these capsules in and have a quick cup of coffee or espresso. Behind the capsules, I'm gonna go ahead and store the extra pieces for our frother, and that'll work perfect because it's not as easy to get to that last little organizer. Next up are some spoons. I went ahead and put the extra wooden spoons along with some metal spoons. Yes, and if you've been here a while, you know I do not like metal, but I will use a metal spoon to stir my morning coffee. This is the final overview of the drawer. It worked perfectly. I made a cup of coffee this morning and I didn't have to run all around the kitchen. Everything was in one place, which will be very convenient on crazy school mornings. The only thing I didn't do is set the delay. It would have been so fun to come downstairs to a freshly brewed cup of coffee this morning, but now we are going to move on to this chalkboard. I got this at Hobby Lobby and I'm pretty sure the sticker said like $69.99, so I got it half off of that, so it was about $35. And there was a sticker on it that said to make sure to season it. And I have never heard of that before, so I obviously I had to Google it and I think there was even some instructions like on the tag. But I had no idea you had to season a chalkboard. It makes sense, I just had no idea. So right now I am seasoning the chalkboard and then we're gonna go ahead and do some fun coffee bar art. I do have big plans for this thing, especially with like new seasons. So today I just kept it simple because I knew if I tried to overthink it, I was just never going to do it. So I looked on Pinterest, found a cute little quote and decided to just kind of wing it. So this will definitely be a fun spot to kind of work my creativity on. But for today, we just did a super simple little design. With Valentine's Day coming up, I decided to do the vine with the little hearts. And the quote I chose is wintry. So I thought everything came together really nice. I'll go ahead and put this into a time lapse and I'll play some music and just let you watch me decorate the chalkboard and then we will meet back up and hang the chalkboard up. Now that the chalk art is done and the board is hung up, the last thing to do is to attach this LED light to the magnetic support that it has. And this little coffee bar area is completely done. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope this video was super helpful. I know it was a lot of information packed into a short video and I definitely could have made multiple videos out of this, but I wanted this to be a one stop for inspiration for a coffee bar from beginning to end, show you how doable it is and you don't have to rush through it. I definitely took my time picking pieces that I loved. So let me know in the comments down below if you have plans to do your own coffee bar and if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you join my little family here on YouTube. So I'm going to leave you with this before and after, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Gonna stay.